Well, in, in the Champions League, because Walker was suspended, there was there was a, an extra no, sure. kind of yeah, he played spoke Ake in that wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah he played Ake, Ake at left yeah. back. But I mean, in terms of the Premier League, yeah. I think I, I'm been. absolutely certain that Walker will play on Sunday. Yeah, I think he's got to. And if you look at the game in midweek as well, if there was a game that maybe Ruben Diaz was maybe fit for, you could have put him in against Atletico Madrid because it wasn't like they were under the, any kind of pressure. I mean, Atletico yeah. played with two centre forwards that were playing right back and left back. I think they had not just no shots on target, I think they had no shots at all. in the game no. at all, Atletico Madrid in that game. So I think, you know, trying to judge that defence on that Atletico Madrid <laughs> exactly. performance is a little bit of a false, yeah, a little bit of a false truth. But it, it, it's true what you're saying about Atletico Madrid. I was at the game and... I was looking at the game. I, I couldn't believe what I was actually seeing. I, was, mm. I thought to myself, they're going to go for it because they yeah. can't. The players they played up front, you can't play counter attack football with because mm. they're not quick enough. They're not quick enough to get past the no. city defence. So it was strange in general. Yeah, they might just look for set pieces in the return leg. But we're not here to talk about. <laughs> we're not here to talk about the Champions League. We're here to talk about the the Premier League. What we what we probably should do before we go further with this is take a look at the the lineups from the last time these two met earlier in the season, which was just a fantastic game. Just to give us an idea of, of who we're looking to put into into each hole. They both went four three three in that. Imagining the same sort of thing for, for this game on, on Sunday. And, of course, there were, there were injuries in there as well. When we're talking about the, the defensive line, if possible, City would like to go with that one, but it might well be that, that Diaz isn't fit. For Liverpool, Trent Alexander-Arnold wasn't available for this one. They've got him back mm. and they've had a, a couple of games. That could be one of those, those decisions that turns out, or one of those situations that turns out to be a considerable one for this game. Absolutely, because listen, we know James Milner will never, will never let you down 100% all the time, but when you talk about that extra bit of X factor, that quality and the relationship that Trent has with Salah as well, I think it's going to be vital. So yeah, you putting him back in, I think again, you'd say that that's Liverpool then at full strength and you've seen Trent certainly the last couple of months, his form's been absolutely sensational. I mean, he's fantastic in the week, he's set plays, he just gives him a whole new dimension and even when he's got the ball, if you look at the movement of the likes of Salah, Jara, even Mane who's on the far side, every time Trent gets the ball and he's got comfortable possessions, their movements, they're running in behind, it's like the red arrows, they're all over the place because you've got someone there who can find that pass. He's almost like a quarterback when yeah. you think about it. If you, if you give him that much time, which is where this, normally you say that about your midfielders mm -hmm. like your Kevin De Bruyne's, but if you give Trent that much time, he will literally put the ball anywhere you want and in a position that can actually hurt you. Mm. Yeah. The, the problem is he's coming up against a Manchester City side that are going to really stretch him. And as much as Trent Alexander-Arnold likes to get forward, sometimes that leaves him a lot of running to do to get they've, back they've to their defensive position. Yeah, and they've targeted him in the past, yeah. haven't they? I remember I was there when I think uh, Sane was playing up against him and they, they obviously Sane is super quick. They actually got Sane in behind him and it, and it hurt Liverpool an awful lot because it was still as fantastic as he is and obviously we're talking about how much how the, the full-backs in, in Alexander-Arnold and Cancelo almost like redefining that role in terms of being playmakers. He is vulnerable, you know, sometimes, isn't he? Especially with that, that ball in behind him that we, we've seen time and again we've been caught off the pitch. So I think, I think that City will look at that and think that's an area to exploit. It'll be interesting to see how they then organise their front three to, to combat it. Do you know, though, that might be Manchester City's Achilles heel, though, because you're right, they might target him, but you know what, Manchester City, they're vulnerable when the ball goes in behind. Now, if they go and squeeze Liverpool, yeah. and then you've got Salah that just spins and, and Trent, and he probably knows they're going to do that. If, it, if they do come onto Liverpool and then Trent just keeps spinning it in behind, Salah, Mane and Jota will have a field day. So I think Manchester City might have to look at this and go, well, yeah, we, we can target him, we can get him behind Trent. But if we try and press him and squeeze him up the pitch, all it takes with someone of his quality, or even Van Dijk, to be fair, he gets the ball, he plays that long pass, they squeeze up and Salah knows that. If they just keep spinning it in behind, that might cause Manchester City problems all day. Does it make a difference then who they, who Jurgen Klopp chooses in, in the centre of, of defence here? Because it was Konate in the, in the Champions League who, mm. yes, scored, but was also culpable for the, the goal that, that Liverpool conceded. Mm. So what, what do you think comes into his, his thinking there? Is it Konate? Is it Matip? What, what do you think? I think, if, I think the biggest thing that he will have to do, especially to allow Trent to do what he likes to do best, is for me, he has to play Henderson and Fabinho. Yeah. He has to play, he can't play one of them because it's, that's stretched too far because City go from one side of the pitch to the other so quickly that the midfielder most probably won't be, be able to get across to help Trent. Whereas if he plays both of them, they can kind of just say, all right, you take care of the left, I take care of the right. And that allows their fullbacks to bomb forward and they won't really get hit on that counter-attack either. 
Yeah, so that could be it could be the less important of the the decisions in terms of what happens in the centre of defence. I think but it is still a choice. I think yeah. Matip. Yeah. I mean, Matip's been outstanding this season, hasn't he? I think yeah. he, he he seems to go for Matip. He's used Kanate quite a bit in the Champions League, hasn't he? Actually, but not so much in the Premier League. And I think his sort of first choice pairing is definitely Van Dijk and Matip. I yeah. think. Yeah, and it seems to be that, as you say, in, in the big in the Premier League games, especially in the big ones, yeah. if Matip's fit, then then he gets the the start. The, we'll, we'll go on. We won't take it. We don't need to take it turnabout. We can <laughs> we can go on to that Liverpool midfield because I think that's where some of the most interesting decisions are now going to be going to be made in the in the midfield for for these two sides. And and there are question marks about the the front line as well for for both of them. But you would go for something that's more protective from Liverpool's point of view. I think so, especially at the Etihad. I think it, you, you you can have your attack there, but you've got to protect yourself at the same yeah. time. And they they know what City are capable of, especially through the midfield area. If you give the people like Kevin De Bruyne, those little gaps in and around your area, he will cause you problems, whether it's a pass or whether it's him shooting. So I think they, they're going to try and keep City as wide as possible. Yeah, so put the, the grown-ups in charge of it. You've also got Thiago to come into the mix. It was Curtis mm. Jones at, at Anfield earlier in the season. What, what do you think? I mean, I love Thiago in possession. I love it. But I think it's, it's for Liverpool, it's vital. It's what they do out of possession. I think you've, you've, whoever, whoever they play in the middle of the park, they're going to have to be able to run. They're going to have to run because <laughs> the way that kind of they rotate Manchester City is so really good. And I think Thiago, listen, he's a special talent, but I almost feel like he's more suited to the Champions League rather than, than the Premier League. But with Henderson and Fabinho in there, and maybe a Curtis Jones, maybe a Naby Keita, they're going to have to be able to get about. And with Henderson, as you said, with that protection, him and Fabinho, that's going to be vital as well. And as you said, helping out each fullback as well so they're not left 1v1 and not exposed. So it's almost like Going to the AI for Liverpool, I know they want to win, but they can't be too kind of gun ho and thinking, right, we've got to win, we've got to win, we've got to overplay City. They've just got to stay in there. Because a point for either side it's, isn't the worst result in the world. But what Liverpool don't want to do is go to the Etihad, get big, and it's like, oh, it was only one point, now it's four again. So I think with the likes of Henderson and Fabinho, you've just got a bit of a protection blanket there. And listen, they can both play, so it's not like you, you're losing anything, but it just gives you that safety blanket a little bit. Yeah, there's so much to, to come into play in terms of the manager's thinking here. Like you said, the fact that it is only one point, so mm, that isn't yeah. really on, on Liverpool to go and fully attack this game and take huge, uh, quite a risk-taking side, but they don't want to go and, and take too many risks. No, they don't want to go and get beaten, basically. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, that's as simple as that. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is one of the key decisions. I think, I think he will go Henderson and Fabinho, and then it's who's that third midfielder. And if he goes Keita, I think that's quite telling. If he goes uh, Thiago, that's quite telling in a sense that you know you think he's going to go for it a bit more with Thiago. Mm. And I, I agree with you in, in terms of Thiago. I think Thiago's a wonderful player. I think he's struggled a bit with the physicality of the Premier League. I think it's been and he's had issues around COVID and, and so on and so forth. I think he's been quite frustrated during his time at Liverpool. It hasn't quite worked out the way he expected it to. Obviously, they expected it to. But in saying that, I still think their best midfield is Fabinho, Henderson, Thiago. I think that's their best midfield, yeah. but maybe it's not necessarily the right midfield to play in this game. So I could understand why they would play something like Keita, who's, who's come back into form as well, hasn't he? I yeah. mean, he's been playing quite well recently. Do you think there's a possibility he might just say, we'll have four attackers? Because then he he's can play Jota, Mane, yeah. Salah, and obviously Diaz, and basically say one of you just filled back. He did that before when we were talking to him before about... Um, mm -hmm. Playing the four attackers, uh, I can't remember who it was. Obviously, it was Firmino, uh, obviously M Mane, uh, Salah, and who was it again? Was it Oxley Chamberlain? I can't remember. Like that. That. He, 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 there was a big debate about. Playing. Was it in the Champions League? No, in the, uh, they, they went to the Etihad. Yeah. I think it might have been in a league game, and he, and he ended up playing the four of them. He yeah. played the four, and they went for it, and I think they got a result. And I think it might have been a draw. I can't remember anyway, but he, he has done it before. Because it, it kind of allows the, him to physically say, all right, Fabinho and Henderson, Sit. you don't need to come yeah. over the halfway line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can just play them the ball and kind of let them express themselves. Because if, yeah. if you play those guys high up the pitch, you're calling it on with City, aren't you? Yeah. Saying, right, okay, are you gonna are you gonna come at us? Because yeah. they like to play a higher lines. So you think, well, you know, it's almost like, cat and mouse. Yeah, yeah. Go, if, we're, exactly. if we're gonna leave, because that's what I would do. I would leave Salah, Jota, and Mane as high as possible. Because then surely Cancelo. I know he's fantastic going forward. I know Carl Walker, but you've always got that slight concern about well, if I go too far forward and you look behind you and you've got, you know what I mean, these three guys on the on the halfway line, that might just force City to go back Sorry, a little it bit. It was Jota he played. He played he played Jota. He played Jota, Mane, Salah, and then he played Firmino in behind in the number them. 10 row, yeah. yeah. That's yes. what he did, yeah. He played that. When Jota just signed. Yes, yeah. and he yeah. came in and he's done really, really well. And we're yeah. all thought, who's he going to leave out? Yeah. He played all four of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that's what I would do if I was him. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a really interesting decision. But also, in terms of having someone like Henderson in there, you need 
the grown-ups. You need the sensible, <laughs> cool heads in yeah. the middle of it because this could be frantic if, if somebody isn't on the pitch getting a grip of the players mm. as well. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's certainly important when you've got someone like Henderson that because there, there will be large periods in the game where I expect where Manchester City will be dominating possession and that's where you need your Hendersons, your cool heads to kind of just everyone settle down, pull into position rather than people just running here, there and everywhere. So even though at times people have questioned Henderson, maybe his ability, which I think is a little bit unfair, his leadership skills are something that you, you can't replace. You, you can't, but you can't buy it. Either. No. You, it's something you either have or you don't have and he has it in abundance he's, and I he's, think he's, he's the loudest player in the Premier League I mean during lockdown we, well, I went to an awful lot of games obviously he is the loudest player <laughs> well Connor Cody might have something to say <laughs> <Yeah>. oh sorry <laughs> yeah. the, you're absolutely right maybe yeah, yeah, Connor yeah. Cody's the other yeah. one actually I thought about yeah those two are the loudest two players in the Premier League yeah so and, right. and there's, there's lots of, of players who've made their debuts next to, to Jordan Henderson said he just talked to me talked all the way through time, the game yeah. he just co coaxed me through it but look that's not going to be the case he's going to be more experienced next to him alongside him at the Etihad but like you say the Manchester City midfield is, is a quite an interesting choice here as well because look Pep Guardiola gets and he probably gets accused of overthinking because we remember the decisions that he made that didn't work out and that that's probably why whereas when he sort of takes a, a risk on something and it, it comes off we go Guardiola being Guardiola the man's <laughs> just a genius but when when he, when he goes into this game against Liverpool, what do you think he's, he's going to do in, in midfield? I, d I don't think he's going to change much. I mm. think um, it'll be KDB. I think Bernardo will play. And obviously, I think Rodri will play yeah. because I don't think Ferda's fit enough to do it. Although, I would play both of them. Because okay. I like my defence protected at yeah. all times and it kind of frees up your attackers to be a little bit more risk-taking. So, But um, I think he'll play those three. And, I, and Bernardo's the man, isn't he? Uh, especially against Liverpool. Yeah. The, the, what he does against them is, is second to none. And if they play anywhere close to how they played Liverpool at Anfield, at the Etihad, it, it could be a big problem for Liverpool. Do you think it's as much with, with Bernardo as well? Because he's a, he's a thinking player, isn't he? Mm -hmm. he it's about how he, he sees the game. Is that, when you're, when you're at this level, you've got two teams at, the, at this level, that that's the kind of thing that, that makes the difference? As much as the physicality, as much as the player might be technically gifted or quick or, or physical, it, it comes down to actually being able to understand what the opponent is doing and understand how to, to try and, and, and negate that. Yeah, he, he, he seems very good at showing up and giving the game what it actually needs. Mm -hmm. Like he, he That's be, a better way of putting yeah. what I was trying to phrase. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's weird because, like, like I said, in a game against Anfield, like, they weren't really, they was passing the ball, but nobody was really taking people on. And then all of a sudden, Bernardo just started just streaming past people and it, it started opening up things. And then people started obviously getting tighter to him, which then created space everywhere else, which then allowed the other City attackers to get into. And, and that's how City like to play. They like spaces. And as soon as you narrow that space down without the number nine, that's where they seem to have kind of struggled. And to a T, in, in the games that I've watched, especially the Palace game, that is, that is something that I saw. They made chances, but the space was never there. And yeah. if they have the space against Liverpool, it's going to be massive problems. Sean, sure, you said you play De Bruyne in the midfield, but do you think he's not tempted to play him in that False nine in this that's, game. That's what I said to uh, that's what I said to Benny as well before. Right. That's normally what he's done in the bigger games. Yeah, he normally plays like ben Bernardo and Kevin normally just like a pendulum, and then the wingers pretty much do really what they so want. I think that will obviously influence his midfield choices, won't yeah. it? Yeah. Really? I mean, I, I'm fascinated where he'll play De Bruyne and Bernardo, whether he plays one of them through that middle area or not. <laughs> I think if he does, I think it will be more Bernardo that starts right. in that number nine area. Because and you they, and they, think, he will yeah. naturally do it, and Kevin normally runs from deep yeah. in behind like a third man run sort of thing. So I think that's the way he will go. But like we say, it's Pep. You never yeah. actually know who he's going to play. You never up seem there. to see the best that either of Gundogan and De Bruyne in the same midfield. You look at the period where De Bruyne was out and Gundogan really stepped up. Um, we've not seen Gundogan in that same type of form. And I don't know, do you think them two can play together? It, it, it was the same with because I had the conversation before, and everybody said the same thing about Bernardo. Because when De Bruyne was injured, that's when all Bernardo's goals were coming. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, it's hard to say they can't play together because we've seen them play together and we've seen City pick up results. Yeah. I just think when they do play together, one of them loses that stamp of authority in a game they would have had, mm. if that makes sense, rather than they, they can't play together. Yeah. They can, but... You lose one, of, like, one of them. Yeah, you lose a bit of that person because Kevin does everything that 
humanly possible. Yeah. As, an, as an attacker, you know what it's like. If yeah. you had a guy behind you that could pass the ball like that, you just don't even need to call. You just make your little movements yeah. and he puts the ball on the money most of the time. But I think the point you raised as well, Jason, is a really good one, which is you can't talk about City's midfield that's right. without talking about the front three because they're interchangeable. It? Yeah, yeah. That's right. And obviously then if you say, so you're saying those three, but then you're saying you're leaving that Gundogan, aren't you? Yeah, I I'm don't think... i if he leaves out Gundogan. I personally. don't think Gundogan starts this game. OK. Yeah, I, I actually don't think he will start. I think he can start Kevin and then even put Kevin beside Rodri a bit deeper because it keeps him away from, like, mm -hmm. the press from the midfield as well and he can influence the game from a lot of places on the pitch. So yeah. there's a lot of ways you can go with the team that he puts out because of how talented they all are. Yeah. Yeah, and they can all do... Everyone's different, got different that, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's, 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 it, because it's not just about right, how we're going to set up. That's almost the most straightforward part of it. And it's not just about, well, then, OK, we're going to have three in midfield, three up front, and these people can all do this job. It's like, well, I've got three players who can go on the right-hand side here, three players who can go on the left, and they can all... They can all interchange throughout the game as well. It's not just that when we see them line up yeah. at the start of the game, that's how they're going to stay. Yeah, and, and obviously then if you so if you pick that midfield three, then what do you do further forward? Because then you're thinking, well, Foden, Sterling, Mares, Grealish, one of those is going to miss out, aren't they? Mm. I think Grealish. <laughs> that's, the, that's the nature yeah. of playing at a club like mm. City and Liverpool. I don't think any of them necessarily deserve to miss out, but Pep always seems to see something in a game that he says, OK, I'm picking this player because I've seen the way he defends sort of thing, whereas a normal manager would just say, he's in form, he's going to play, yeah. whereas Pep doesn't. He just he, he reads the game and sees it completely different. And, and I've watched games and it's Bernardo and Kevin in the midfield and then at, at, at one point in the game, they're both on the right-hand side. And I'm like, so where's, <laughs> where's the midfielders <laughs> gone sort of it? But it, it works because yeah. they overload one side so much that it drags the whole rest of the team across and then there's this big gaping hole for like Rodri and the attackers coming yeah. to play in there. another side it might look unbalanced yeah. but with city it, it's deliberate yes, and, it, exactly. and it creates a, it creates a problem for the, the opposing side of all the the outfield players for this game is Phil Foden the most nailed on to start do we think given his previous performances against Liverpool three goals in his last three